All right. Hello and welcome to the Middle East Forum speaker webinar series and podcast. I'm Stacey Roman and I will be moderating this discussion today. We're pleased to have Wafa Sultan, psychiatrist and author, join us to discuss ex-Muslims. Dr. Sultan will speak for 15 minutes, then open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen to type your question. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Dr. Wafa Sultan. Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you so much for inviting me to this event and actually for remembering me after too many years, me being hidden. Thank you so much, especially to Dr. Pipes and his team. When you asked me to give a summary of the situation of ex-Muslims in the world today, I thought what better example than to speak of my own. Even as a well-known writer and thinker in the Arabic countries, I am convinced that my situation is no different from that of any ex-Muslim. I am in constant contact with many individuals, exchanging daily countless number of messages that undoubtedly fully prove we are all riding the same boat and facing the same turbulence of waves. In 2011, which coincides with the beginning of the Syrian civil war, I had reached a terrifying point of frustration. After 10 years, I find myself in the same level of frustration today. We as ex-Muslims have tried to reveal to the world the truth about Islam in the hopes of creating a better future for its followers and thus for the whole world. We risk our lives for our mission regardless of the suffering it causes. Unfortunately, it feels as thus, this is an uphill battle in which the rest of the world has abandoned us to fight on our own. Two decades have passed since the disaster that took place on September 11th. And despite the tremendous efforts we have made, it still feels as thus we have not achieved much. The civilized world doesn't support us and doesn't give us what we need to achieve our mission. This was and is still my situation not to mention the millions of ex-Muslims who are still living under unbearable Sharia laws that persecute them and threaten their life daily. They are stuck hopelessly and helplessly. Beside needing the pressure placed on Islamic governments to guarantee individual safety, and to protect everyone's freedoms, we have also begged for a media platform to deliver our message to the new generation. Unfortunately, both pleas have not come to fruition. Ultimately, this reinforces our conviction that the world is not interested in us and is not interested 
in changing the reality of Muslims for the better. In that regard, I would like to cite an example to illustrate the concept further. During my interview on Al Jazeera, which was conducted in 2006, the host gave me only a few minutes to say what I wanted. These few minutes have surpassed any further efforts since then. And since then, we haven't seen any experience like mine repeated in any Arabic media. We are prohibited from appearing on any of them. Moreover, ex-Muslim experiences with social media platforms have achieved nothing but a great deal of pain. We ultimately become discriminated against and banned from fully expressing our concern to a point where we were compelled to adopt the conspiracy theory that the West has sold us in exchange for the money flowing from the Arabian Gulf. By the way, I would like to inform you that I have been restricted from Facebook six times in a few months. Last time, the two of my pages on Facebook were restricted for a month. Why? On the pretext that I didn't follow their standards. I didn't follow their standards. What are their standards? I am banned while the Quranic verses that call for cursing the Jews and the Christian, demanding Muslims to cut their necks, are allowed and permitted to spread like wildfire all over the social media. What a disgrace. I see it as a moral catastrophe that we who left Islam must carry. We hold the, the Western world, particularly America, largely accountable for fall failing us. However, regardless of our hardships, we must still have hope as we religiously hold on to our dream that one day we will be heard and subsequently our mission will be achieved. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. We have quite a few comments coming in just about how much people are grateful to hear you speak. Uh, but the first question we have is from Ira Strauss. Could you please give us an evaluation of ex-Muslim organizations, particularly the ex-Muslims of North America and Secular Underground Network? Should they be supported and how can we support them? I have never heard of any. Okay. We Do you have any that you want? We're not movement. We're not organization. We are just individuals working on our own. There is no movement. I haven't seen any, any movement for ex-Muslim in the Arab world. All right, the next question is from Peggy. Uh, we care much for the peril of Muslim women, but feel helpless to do so. What can we do? Attempt to pass le legislation in the States to bring attention to this plight? You know what I have mentioned in my introduction what has been, has to be done. We have to be supported. We have to feel not alone in this battle. We need media platform to send our message to the new generations. We cannot make any positive change unless others heard our message. 
I don't know what you can do in the United States, but I know what can be done regarding Muslims all over the world. They need to hear our message. They need to be changed. This mentality has been shaped for 1400 years. It is not easy to make a change, but it is not impossible. We need your help. We need to feel that we are supposed, uh, supported, not only as Muslim women, as ex-Muslims in general. But to, to be honest, you know, I have never been politically correct and I don't know how to be. You know, we, we feel like we are abandoned by the Western world. As I told you, I have reached a very, very high level of frustration, feeling that like I am fighting on my own. That's what we need. We need media platform. We need to put pressure on Islamic governments to guarantee their safety, to protect their freedoms. That's what we need. All right, thank you. Uh, Sevilla Goldman, Goldberg, sorry, asks, uh, what do you think the catalyst would be to get organized as ex-Muslims to, to have an organization that could push the media platforms? To reach out to whom are, ve are well known in the Arab world. There is too many, uh, not too many, there is some people who are well known as fighters. We need to reach out and to unite their efforts in order to make a, a, a effective movement. We need to reach out. We need to make them feel they are protected and they can fully express themselves. That's what we need as a first step. Thank you. So we have a question from David Cashin. Uh, you have helped me understand why you disappeared off the scopes for me. I joined today because I wondered what had happened to you. Uh, you are being canceled. The standards you refer to essentially mean that all critique of Islam is automatically Islamophobia. How can yeah. a religion be reformed if it can't be criticized? There is no religion above being criticized. No, no belief system is above being criticized. You know, we have to, we ha we have to, to express ourselves. We lived in hell for too many centuries. It is time for us to, ex to express our frustration. It is time for us to make a positive change. I don't understand what's going on in world. I am banned from Facebook for one month. Even they didn't mention for what. They said, you don't follow our standards. I read their standards. I was shocked. I couldn't comprehend what their st standards are. We are so frustrated. Tell us what to say. And, you know, Quranic verses that incite against Jews and Christians are all over the Facebook. But whatever I say is banned, we are prohibited from expressing ourselves. It is disgrace, disgrace. Where is the Western freedoms that the Western laws have guaranteed? Where are they? Why us? Why we are discriminated against? Why we are banned of spreading our messages? We don't understand what's going on. I've been reached by millions in the Islamic world asking me do something. They think I am, you know, a part of the White House. Do something, do something. I said, what can I do? Say something. Why we are banned? Why we are prevented from fully expressing ourselves? I don't know. I come here to ask you for an answer. If you know any answer, please let me know so I can deliver it to ex-Muslims all around the world. I need the answer from you. I don't have any answer. 
Well, one of our viewers, Peggy, did say that she knows of a platform that allows for freedom of expression, and she can contact you after the webinar. Um, but uh, Baze asks, why, why have Muslims so far failed to separate religion from state, such as the Christianity or, or Judaism? Because we, we haven't given the opportunity to make a change. We haven't. You know, the, the, you, the, I mean, the West, the West didn't put any pressure on governments to separate religion from government because it is for the sake of dictatorship to keep the religion alive. They are cooperating with clergymen to guarantee their position and to guarantee their grip. And I would love to be, you know, to, to, to hear about the platform uh, this lady has mentioned. I would love to work with her. Sounds good. I'll put you guys in contact after this. Um, so you mentioned that there were a lot of perils for you and others like you who are very outspoken. Harold Walker asks, can you be more specific about the problems and discrimination you have suffered? Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, we, we were left only with social media platform, only. The, the mainstream media in the Arab world, you know, don't welcome us, don't invite us. I can give you an example, Al Hurra, is a well-known TV station. And it's sponsored financially by the United States. They interviewed me once, only for a few minutes. And to be honest with you, I don't think they ever broadcast this interview. They exclude secularists specifically those who left Islam. The interviews, the ideas that spread through Al Hurra TV station reinforced the status quo and doesn't help to make any positive change. We wonder why, we wonder it is a TV station sponsored financially by the United States. We need an answer why we are excluded, why our message doesn't reach them, why they don't invite us. We need an answer. We always wonder why it is considered in the Arab world a, a US TV station. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, searching for an answer. Well, we are very glad to be giving you a platform to speak on here. Uh, Laurie Kurz asks, can non-Muslims make a difference in the Arab world or will, this change, or will this change need to come from within? With whom? Uh, from within uh, the Muslim community. What kind of a change? They need to be open to the whole world. They need to stop the hateful message said by the Quran, I, by the Hadith, by the, the uh, Muhammad's biography. They need to take out this hateful, from, hateful messages from school curriculum. That's what we ask for. We need to stop those hateful messages aired from every mosque in the Islamic world. It has to be stopped somehow. It has. We need the West to help us putting more pressure to, to replace these hateful messages by better messages. They are brainwashing the little kids to hate and to be against everyone else. We need to do something. That's what we need. 
that's when when I listen to 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 any TV station in the the, the Arabic world, I, I I feel so frustrated. Nothing has been changed since September 11. Nothing. So why the the the, the, the especially the U.S. government is supporting like Egypt, like Jordan, like and nothing has been changed. We don't understand the politics of the United States regarding our mission. We need to understand what's going on so we can keep our fight. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Stern asks, well, first off, she says, it's great to see you and hear from you again after all these many years. Uh, can you kindly tell me uh, what your honest feelings are about the Islamophobia bill, which will appoint an Islamophobia envoy similar to the anti-Semitism envoy? Islamophobia. We are we are fearing the truth about Islam. There is no such Islamophobia. It is a term and was created by Western people just in the sake of being politically correct. Correct. I don't believe there is such think like Islamophobia. And I am so frustrated when I hear it might be applied in the United States. One day they might shut us up. Who knows? Who knows? Our fear is increasing that day by day. Sorry, my unmute button wasn't working. All right, uh, Carl Goldberg, Goldberg asks, what do you think about the changes going on in Saudi Arabia? You know what? We have to encourage them. We have every positive sign. We have to appreciate it. I don't know the depth of these changes. However, we need to encourage every step toward a better world. So let's hope for the best. Let's encourage him to, to go farther. Let's encourage him to do more. I have a dream one day to be interviewed by Al Arabiya. It is a Saudi TV station well known in the Arab world. I'm looking for it. I'm dreaming about it. Once I am there, I will tell you our mission is achieved. Hmm. Rory Kurtz asks a follow-up question. Um, how would you see an outside country trying to change the religion of another? Changing politics, yes, but religion, is this something we could feasibly? Not from outside. You need to depend on people within to change their teachings, to replace their teachings with better ones. You know, you can pressure the governments, but you cannot pressure people to do that. The change has to come from the governments. And I truly believe if the United States is able to have an army base in Qatar or in any part of the Arab world, then they are able to pressure the governments to do so. Thank you. Hugh Murray asks, uh, won't Muslim leaders be killed or pushed out of office if they were to help you? I didn't understand the question. Wouldn't Muslim leaders be killed or pushed out of office if they were to help or uh, speak up uh, with your cause? Changing. From hate to peace. A Muslim leader is kicked out? Would they be, or, or is that, if, if they were to change their thinking and go from Islam? The government, the Islamic government will be, will be, no, no, I don't believe in that. Why, why now they're not able to do anything with the, the, the Saudi prince? He is doing, he is making a change. And the clergymen are mute now are mute now and some some of them have come out to support 
his steps. The government always had the upper hand to make a change. And Saudi Arabia is a good example. Now everybody, every sheikh, every imam is muted. And some of them come out to support what is the princes, what the princes is doing. So don't tell me they will be afraid of people if they make any change. They have the upper hands to do whatever they are pressured to do. Fantastic point. Uh, Carl Goldberg asked, uh, is, is the Abraham's Accords kind of going with what you're, you're hoping to see in the future? Uh, going against the Islamic sacred doctrine prohibiting normalization with Israel. Is this a good step? It is very good step. It is very good step. Once they establish a normal relationship with Israel, they will be able to normalize their own relationships. Sunnis are against Shia. They hate each other. But when it comes to Israel, it is the, 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 the most important, the biggest enemy. So once they have a good relationship, a normal relationship with Israel, they will feel they are forced to improve their own relationship. So I am looking for this step to be taken. Arlene asked, well, what religion do you practice now? We've spoken to, to a few ex-Muslims who have converted to Christianity, but is that necessary to, to switch religions in order to, to make a difference? No, no, of course you don't need to. I don't follow any specific religion. I do believe there is a creator. I, I, I do believe there is God who I, I can build a good relationship with, but I don't believe in any religion. And we don't need to replace our religion with different religions. Some people, they feel that way and they are, let's, you know, let's encourage them to do. But for me and for others, I don't believe I need to adopt any kind of religion. I am fine with myself and I am, humanity is my religion. Fantastic answer. Uh, Mindy Stein asks, uh, have you been in contact with Judy, Judy Jasser uh, from the American Muslims Against Anti-Semitism? No, no, I haven't, no. Have you been in contact with any ex-Muslims uh, outspoken oh, I, to- I feel like I'm not welcome because my message is totally different than Dr. Al Jasser's message, totally different, which I believe we are all needed. I'm not against his message, but, but I, I feel like I'm not welcomed by them because they are trying, they are trying to fix Islam. I don't believe we can fix any religion. I don't believe. So I, I'm a little different than the way they are. And I feel I tried, I have tried. I met Dr. Al Jazir in, I believe in two conferences. I came to him, I shook his hand. I tried to talk to him. I felt like he, he tried to avoid me. So I don't know if that's true or not. It is just feeling. I am contacted by, by ex-Muslims who have the same message that our teachings totally need to be replaced. There is no way of fixing Islam. So, so. Of course, and we have so many other questions coming in, but only have a minute left. Can you give our viewers some information as to where to find some more of your work, such as the, the God, who, uh, God Who Hates? Your book? Yeah, my, my work now is limited to Arabic language. I have followers, many, 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 many followers on Facebook. And I post every day an article teaching people how to be good, teaching people how to love each other, teaching people how to make this world a better place for our generation 
and for every generation in every country. You know, now we, we belong to the same universe. We are all parts of the same universe. We have to be led by love and only love. Every day I post few articles, writing, and I have, as I said, many, many, many followers. And to be honest, I master lang uh, Arabic language. And they consider me uh, the Arab Shakespeare, believe it or not. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of what I am doing. To some point, it gives me a sense of being satisfied. That's what I can say. So at this point, regardless of the frustration I feel, at the same time, I feel satisfied with what I am doing. And I need to be supported by whatever I am doing. To be banned from social media is a very, very painful experience. For one month, I was away from my readers. It almost killed me spiritually, uh, mentally, psychologically. It affected me so bad. Now when I write, I try to walk on eggs shell. I'm trying not to offend their standards that I don't know till now. I'm trying not to offend their standards. So this is my situation, and this is every ex-Muslim's situation. Mm. Understood. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we've come to the close of our webinar. Thank you again, Dr. Sultan, for thank joining us today. Thank you. thank you so much. God bless you. Of course. Thank you. Uh, for our viewers, please be on the lookout for our weekly webinar offerings email coming out over the weekend. Thank you all for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.